Hi, welcome to Charlie's Desk. It's another Brailers of the World episode. Um, today's entry is the Anderson Sorensen Braille Writer from Copenhagen, Denmark. So it came in a small, um, I guess it's a medium sized, a brailler sized black uh, metal suitcase, which is just um, the cover. Uh, for the brailler and then uh, the bottom of it is wooden um, is a wooden board so the case is composed of the base of the brailler and then this black metal covering and then there's a little latch um, that goes around the keyhole and but it's one of those things where you shift the keyhole to the right and then it'll open up to reveal the Anderson Sorensen Copenhagen Brailler. So I'll just, I'll get rid of these things. So, yeah, this is fun. Just another Brailler from another part of the world. Um, my computer is off screen. Ooh. So I'll just read some stuff that I was researching about schools for the blind in Copenhagen. And the, the first Institute for the Blind was established in 1811. Um, and then it became the Royal Institute for the Blind. It was originally built by the Order of the Chain, which I have no idea what that is. Um, and it was, it was built outside Copenhagen and, um, so yeah, that was the start of the Education for the Blind there, which syncs up with what was happening in Europe and America around that time. Um, and But this Brailler is from 1930, and Anderson Sorensen is a, still a, a company. They're still outside Copenhagen, and they, they make custom machined parts. So um, in sort of the world of Braillers, there's... There's like schools or institutions for the blind that enlist the help of private companies like Frank Haven Hall and his bro writer and the Corona typewriter company. So I'm wondering if in Copenhagen, something similar happened with the Anderson Sorensen Braille writer and um, you know, the Institute for the, the blind there which has had a nice fancy new building rebuilt in 1858 uh, through 1880. And, and it's a landmark in Copenhagen, which is no longer a school for the blind. So, um, but I thought I would just describe this brailler a little bit. Um, it has a crackled black enameled aluminum body. Um, it has a die box arch that's pretty flat on top and that reaches over the carriage. Um, it's just very nicely made. It's very pleasing. Um, the keys are made of this old plastic called the Bakelite. Um, and the space keys, they kind of radiate, radiate out slightly um, from the middle, like you see in a lot of like Braille displays today. They kind of are angled slightly to be comfortable for the fingers. Um, and then the space key is, like on modern Braille writers too, is um, 90 degrees to the uh, other keys. Um, what else? Um, oh yeah, so the stuff that isn't like black enameled aluminum is like nickel plated um, just like kind of a dull, 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 but shiny metal, um, looks really good. Um, it has the most delightful carriage release mechanism, just rotate a little bit. It's, it's, uh, you just pull it out a little knob <laughs> and then it slowly, it slowly proceeds, uh, to... To ring the bell and get to the end of the line. Um, so we can turn it around and turn it back to it. Um, so let's see. Whoa! On an angle, that's really fast. 
Jeez. So, all right, that's good. Yeah, so this is from 1930, so it's still, still got a lot of spunk in it. Um, clearly, if it's sliding like that. But I also have on my desk um, my toolbox, so I thought I might just kind of open it up and see if we can just take a look in there. Um, what else? Oh, the backspace key, instead of like, so there's a little knob that you pull out to release the carriage, um, which probably needs to be old because it's going very slow. Yep, there you go. And then the backspace key is a knob that you just push in. Um, very satisfying, but there's a rectangular piece of aluminum right on the front with two screws uh, in the lower half that has the label of Anderson Sorensen. Um, and I'm just gonna see if those will come off or, or not. Or whether, oh, is that filled up? We'll see. Maybe this isn't what I'll do. Oh, I need a smaller screwdriver. All right, let's see about the, the arched tie box at the top. If that comes off. Yep, okay, cool. So the arched die box, which is, Basically, it kind of looks like the trunk of an elephant, and then it goes and floats over the embossing head, and it provides the resistance, so the pins of, of the briller that make the dots don't push through um, the paper. So there's six little indentations in the, the die box. Um, and I'll be able to show that if I can successfully remove it from the four um, screws that are holding it in place. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it looks very nice and simple in terms of construction. It's not at all ostentatious. Um, it's not beautiful, but it's very appealing. Um, I guess some, like, I, it's the most beautiful carriage release mechanism I've seen. And a very pleasing, it's very pleasing. Okay. Now I'm removing the four screws. I should lift right off. Okay. Oh, wow, interesting. Okay, yeah, so I'll hold up to the camera the, um, the, the die box so you can see the two columns there of three, the two parallel columns of indentations um, for the pins to kind of sandwich the paper in between to emboss. Um, so, but you can't really see anything. Um, you can't really see anything by removing that. You are just able to see um, the die box, which is what, the APH archive keeps calling that the arch die box, so that's what I will call it too. Um, yeah, so this was sold in the states, though. There was like, there were some catalogs where you could get a variety of of brailers, um, in Europe, and kind of like the '30s were a free for all for brailers because, um, you know, I don't know the the Hall brailer has been accepted, but there was a lot of flaws in that. I don't know, I'm trying to think of what other brailers were available. I mean, Perkins had a, had a braille writer, but it had some flaws apparently. Um, and then of course, obviously, they, they made the most successful brailler. Um, and that kind of became a monoculture. And that's the brailler you see today. There's some other braille manufacturers for sure, but Perkins, Brailler definitely dominates, so. Um, but yeah, no, this is a cutie. I'm a big fan. Um, it doesn't seem like it's from 1930 to me. It's got, it's just so, so nice. I mean, it does have, yeah, it's very well made. It has little um, margin control things. And in the case, it looks like there's like a paper tray that you can somehow attack, but I'm not, I'm not seeing how that works. Um, I wonder if I would be able to remove that front panel just to see.
Do I have a skinnier screwdriver? Yeah, I do. I'll just leave that there for a second. Fascinating video, right? You can stop watching at any time. Okay, but I do want to see if I can take take that off. But I had to get my like electronics screwdriver. This aluminum thing is shaking a lot. It's bothering me. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So I'm loosening the two screws on the front plate and we'll just kind of see hopefully where the levers extend into. If it comes off, okay, pretty short screws. Wow, that's cool. Um, so it reveals some gears that are involved with advancing and um, releasing the, the um, the carriage and there's a lot of brass in there gosh it's really gorgeous so I'll just um, um, you so you push in a pin and that advances this cog one um, one groove at a time which is one letter space at a time and then um, when you pull this pin yeah, it just releases it, but it's not gonna go on this angle that I have it in. Yeah, so that's fun. So yeah, this gives you kind of a good um, get to know you of the, the Anderson Sorensen trailer. Yep, aluminum, really nice. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, I, I, you know, why not? Why not make longer form content, Charlie? Who cares? You can leave anytime you want. I do want to to take a look at the piece of paper that's in there, because um, it's funny. I'm just uh, putting in putting in the uh, two screws on the front plate. So there's a roll of paper in there and the top part of the roll is like someone is making a, a braille drawing, sort of like a, some concentric rectangles and then um, there are some words and some of them are bad words. I'll give that person privacy. And then uh, it's a steel patent wheel with the same kind of door that opens up and uh, probably has little teeth in it and uh, holds on to the paper. I'm struggling to find the release mechanism. Oh yeah, it's on both sides of those switches. Gosh, this is really nice. Yeah, well-made, thank you. Thank you Copenhagen for a well-made machine. Um, that's, well, that's pretty good. That's today's episode. I don't even really need to clean it that much. I'll probably do some dusting, but um, yeah, it's in great shape. What a steal. Um, all right. Thanks for watching. Bye.